What do you do if you want to make a print with that, but the only camera you have is this? Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -mm. That's not better in my head. So today we're going to talk about how to make a darkroom print from an iPhone or other smartphone image. So we're going to actually project what's on the screen onto photo paper. Uh, any enlarger should be able to do this. Uh, I'm going to use my giant 8x10 enlarger. So I've got a uh, special holder that I've kind of just fudged around to, to do this. Most of them though, you should be able to use just the phone, maybe a negative carrier. Now, before we get started, if you want to help support this channel, you can get t-shirts such as this from my Teespring store. It's down in the description. Or you can get a print that's featured on any of my videos, also down in the description. So if the only camera you have on you for any you know special event is your smartphone, but you are determined to make a darkroom print, you're going to use it as a replacement for your enlarging head and negative. So I'm going to show you how I got set up in my enlarger. You may have to do something a little bit different to get yours to work, but we're also going to look at what kind of settings we might need to change to get it to happen. So let's go to the enlarger and uh, get set up. So step number one is remove the negative carrier. So in my particular enlarger, I'm not going to use the negative carrier. It's only going to get in the way. So I'm going to set this aside. To get the phone in the enlarger, if you have a smaller one, like a Bessler 23C or anything where you can take the head off, it's a small one, I would go ahead and just do that. Then you can just lay the phone right where the negative carrier is, face down. In my enlarger, if I tried to do that, it's so much bigger than the phone, the phone would just drop right down and not do any good. So I have this carrier, which is actually a homemade carrier I made a long time ago. Uh, to use Omega D carriers in here. Uh, it didn't work, but it is gonna hold my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the image up and I'm going to turn my screensaver off. That way I don't have to worry about the exposure. I'm also going to go ahead and set my brightness, my phone will cooperate with me, there we are, set my brightness to full. That way I can control my time, because it is fairly dim. All right, and now pull up the image. Remember though, if you take a photo with your camera, you're going to have to invert the image from a positive to a negative. You also may want to flip the image horizontally so that whatever was on the left side now becomes the right. That's the way that your negative would be when you print. You don't have to do that, but you are going to get a flipped image otherwise. Now your phone software may or may not be able to do that on its own. You may have to get a third party software to do so, but either way, you'll want to do that. Then once it's done, you have your image and uh, you want to get it in here. So I want to lay it down my little holder and then put this up in the top. And it just barely fits for me. There we go. But it does fit. All right. Now, I am not going to be using the timer from my enlarger because it's not controlling the head. I've got my lens. Make sure you're using a lens with enough coverage for your phone screen. In my case, I'm using my 150 millimeter lens, just like what a four by five. You can probably, if you have a smaller phone or if you want to shrink the image down, you can get away with a 100 or a 90 millimeter. And if you shrink it down to a 35 millimeter format, you can probably use a 50 millimeter lens. That's up to you and what you want to do. I'm leaving it a full size. Remember, it's an older model iPhone 6 for me. And uh, the 150 gives me plenty of coverage. So the way that I'm going to control my exposure, I've got a handy dandy timer that has a loud click. So I'm 
that's what I'm going to use. And then I've got a piece of craft foam and I'm just going to place it under the lens. So I'll start the timer, I'll move it out of the way, expose, and then put it right back. That's it. So I've got my easel already sized. I'm just gonna go through the uh, focusing steps and then we're ready to go. So let's get some lights off and make a test print. Believe it or not, it is actually on right now. It is a very faint image uh, and the safe light, which is turned all the way up for the video camera is really kind of obscuring it. So you can't see it very well on camera, even when I turn the safe light all the way down. Though I can see it here when I have the safe light down. <clears throat> there are a couple of different factors for that. I do have the phone all the way to full brightness, but because I chose to use a 150 millimeter lens for a very modest enlargement, I had the enlarger up higher. If I used a shorter focal length, my enlarger would be lower and the intensity would be brighter. It's also a 5.6 lens. Most of the 80 millimeter, 100 millimeter are going to be in the f4 range and a 50 millimeter if you choose to make this a 35 millimeter sized digital image on your screen is a 2.8 typically. So that would of course make it brighter as well and therefore shorter printing times than what we're going to have today. But as it is right now, sorry, you're not going to be able to see the actual projection, but I'm still going to go through the steps so you can see what's happening. I am going to go ahead and put a two filter in there. So if I change it, my printing times don't really change. So I'm just going to put it under the lens and then I'm going to take my craft foam and I'm just going to lay it on top. So now I've got a black card and let's get some paper and we'll make a test strip. And I'm going to do three second increments. Okay. So let's process that and see what we get. All right, we have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 seconds. It is very contrasty. I mean, I've got blacks, I've got pure white. So I want to take the contrast down. So that's a two filter. Of course, I can use my regular printing controls, but I would like to kind of start to get in the right place with just the phone, leaving the two filter. That gives me something to move to when I'm uh, printing. So Thinking this through, the phone produces a lot of blue light. Uh, I know that's something that doctors are worried about uh, when you are shopping for eyeglasses, screen time, blue light, and that tends to be the bluer end near UV of the spectrum. If you're using graded paper, that'd be fine. This would just have the effect of faster printing times. For variable contrast, that means I'm exposing the blue layer, creating higher contrast because the green layer is getting less exposed. My solution then, uh, well, thinking through a possible solution is setting the night shift function. So I'm going to shift the night, uh, the night shift all the way to its warmest Maybe that'll get us closer to a 3400K screen, and we'll see what happens. So let's try that. And this is what we got. So this is the night shift, exact same exposure times. So that reduced the contrast, I think it also greatly reduced the exposure time. And I think the reason why is because when it shifts, it shifts closer to the, um, the spectrum of the safe light. So I think it's just not as 
while it seems just as intense, maybe it's shifting to part of the spectrum that the paper is not sensitive to. Okay, uh, next thought, maybe I'll just split the difference. So let's try splitting the difference and I'll use the contrast controls in the software. And what we'll do is maybe start with half contrast down from the scale, the middle of the scale, and go from there. Okay, this is starting to do better. So this is a uh, five second exposure. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. This is with the night shift halfway between um, cool and warm. And it's with my contrast halfway between middle and low contrast, just as a starting point. And it's actually starting to look fairly decent. I think it's just too light. So now I'm going to give it longer exposure time. So if this is 30. I think I'm going to do a 35 or maybe a 30 and higher. So let's try that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So this is 30, 35, 40, 45. Definitely getting on the right track. It's still a little blank down here, but I'm starting to get some decent contrast there. Still the two filter, still halfway between cool and warm on the night shift, and still halfway between middle and low contrast on the iPhone app. So I think what I'm going to do is just go one notch higher to 60 seconds and leave everything else alone. And that did it. So 60 seconds, two filter, and then the rest of the phone settings were the same. So does this work? Yeah, I would say it works. Does it work well enough that I want to do it a lot? No, not really. You can control most of the uh, the printing process as you might want to. I use, I used my filters just like I would a normal print, but I had to kind of control the phone to do that. There are apps out there that will let you do this easier. They're not free. They weren't exactly expensive. It looked like a couple were you know $10 or less. And they kind of give you a little bit more control. But I can definitely see the pattern of the pixels from my screen. But I have an iPhone 6. It's an older model. It's not even the 6S. It's 6 way back when. Don't judge me. Uh, but a retina screen might do a little bit better. An iPad with a retina screen might do even better because it's smaller enlargement. But overall, I mean, for me, this is just a novelty. I wouldn't do this a lot. Will it work? Sure. Do I want to do it? Mm, probably not. But you may find that for you, it is the best alternative to get an actual darkroom print when your phone is the only camera you've got on you. So get out there and make some photographs, phone or otherwise, make some prints in your darkroom, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.